Hi, and very welcome to today's class. Um, you might like to have a strap, a block and a blanket. If you don't have them, then don't worry. The strap is probably the most useful. So even just grab a dressing gown cord if you can and then come to sit however's comfortable. And we're just going to start by rolling the shoulders. Maybe let them roll backwards a few times. And then rolling them forwards a few times. And then we're just going to shake. So shaky shake, however you like. Your arms shake, maybe your hands shake, maybe your head has a little shake. It's to loosen up. Just let it go. There might have been some tension, some anxiety, and this just helps. You can pull a face, you can do anything you want at the moment. It's just to shake around. Even the hips maybe have a little wiggle. Uh, you can pretend you're doing a little dance. Don't worry about it. There isn't a wrong way to be doing this shaking. And then just shake a little less, a little less, a little less. And come to a stillness. Lovely. And just find your comfortable position there. You could be kneeling or you could be cross-legged. And just notice what you feel in your body at the moment. Maybe there's a warmth or a tingling in your arms. And come to notice your breath. If you like, you might place your hands onto your belly and see if you can feel your breath center down around your belly. It's grounding you. You can feel your belly rise as you inhale. And feel it relax as you exhale. And we're just going to settle there with a few more breaths. And release your hands back down to your thighs. And you might let your eyes blink open again. And we're going to come over onto hands and knees then, so into a tabletop position. And we'll start with a few cat stretches. So your fingers are spread nice and wide, knuckle pads pressed into the ground. As you inhale, you look forwards and up and we'll exhale. Let your spine curl up towards the ceiling. Give your head a little shake. See how your neck feels. And just try a couple more like that. So feeling some movement into your spine, whatever your own range of motion is today. See if you can be moving with your breath. So however long your inhale takes, as you look forwards and then bring your hips back towards your heels. And we're going to start to let the hips move in a circle now. So with this one, I think of I'm drawing a circle with, with my bum or with my hips. Maybe inhale as you come forwards and exhale as your bum comes back towards your heels. And you're just drawing a nice big circle with your hips, with your bum. And you can maybe feel this into your hips, into your shoulders even sometimes. And then we're going to change the direction of the circle. You can let your head move if it would like to. See if you can feel some freedom around your shoulders. And again, you're just drawing a circle with your bum here, making your bum move around in a circle. Again, inhaling as you come forwards and exhaling as you move back. And come to sit back on your heels when you're ready. Take a pause. 
So our first yin pose, if you like to, you could sit up onto something. It can even be a book, anything that's just handy to give your hips a little lift. And we're going to start with a butterfly pose. So the soles of your feet are going to come together and they're a nice distance away from your groin. So your legs are in a diamond shape. Let your knees just relax towards the ground. Your hands rest wherever is comfortable there. Take a breath. And if you feel ready to, you might start to curl forwards. You can either let your head dangle, it could rest onto your hands if that was more comfortable, or it could rest onto a, a bolster or a pillow even if you have one handy. So we'll be in this first pose for three minutes. And I'd like to start with a poem today. It's Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. And meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. And whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. You might just come back to your breath if your mind has has travelled off anywhere. And just notice your inhale. Maybe lengthen your exhale. See if it would like to just go that little moment longer. And nice and gently bring yourself back up right. So well done, that was a good three minutes. We're going to bring the knees together and let them gently windshield wiper from side to side. Just bringing a bit of movement back. So our next pose we're going to come to is straddle pose or dragonfly. So your legs are going to come out as wide as is comfortable for them today. They can be straight or you might have a bend in your knees. So this will depend on your hamstrings, on your back. So whatever works for you today. And just take a breath there to begin with. And again, we're going to be in this dragonfly pose for about three minutes. So you might look towards your left leg, your left foot, bring your hands either side of it, and then gently fold forwards to wherever gravity would like to bring you. So I'm just going to remind us of, our, of what we're aiming for. Indian, as much as we're aiming for 
for anything. The first thing I like to do in each pose is to find my edge. And this doesn't mean pushing to the max. This is where it's not too easy, not too hard. It's your point of resistance. And then I'd like you to soften. So trying to relax your legs here, relax your, your buttocks. And just come back to center for a moment. Turn towards your right leg and fold down towards your right leg. You might notice the two sides are different. So again, we're finding our point of resistance. We're softening, relaxing as much as we can. And then we're looking for a stillness. And the stillness can be the, the challenging part. And I must admit, I notice that as I video myself because I can see when I'm, when I thought I was still and in fact, I'm not. So it's those, it's recognizing that we're trying to be mindful about our movements. So of course, please do move if you need to, or definitely if there's any pain, but it's to maybe not fidget or at least fidget less. And come back up to center. So for the last maybe minute or so, we're gonna fold straight forwards. So coming back to, to center. And again, to wherever you might go. I find this quite a humbling pose. Um, I'm very aware that I'm quite stiff around my hips so I don't go very far and it, it can be nice to to not worry about that. It's your ego that's saying wouldn't it be nice to go further. Your body is going to be quite happy wherever it is today. That's just where it is. And come back up again, lovely. It might be nice to bring your hands underneath your knees as you lift your legs back in. They might be a little bit fragile and we might let the legs ever so gently windshield wiper from side to side again. That should hopefully feel nice. I hope so. We're gonna make our way from there over onto our fronts. So you're gonna come to lie down on your front and we're gonna come into a sphinx pose to begin with. So your shoulders could be over your elbows or your elbows could even come a little bit further forward. Make sure you do have room for your, for your legs. It's nice not to be uh, kicking a wall or anything. And have a little wriggle here again. Maybe wriggle your legs, wriggle your bum. Let everything relax and have that little check in with your back. If there's any discomfort here, bring your forearms further forwards, or you could even lie all the way down on your front. Maybe just rest your hands as a little pillow, rest your head onto your hands. You can let your head hang down towards the ground, or you could cup your hands if you like, rest your chin into your hands. And there should be a sensation in your lower back, but not any kind of sharp pain, maybe just a, a dull ache so that you're aware of it. And it might be nice to imagine the sunshine whilst you're here. So this is my, it's known as Sphinx pose, but it's my reading at the beach pose. And I like to imagine the sun shining down on the back of your body. 
and it's just a beautiful warmth but not too hot and you just feel it warming right between your shoulder blades and starting to spread that warmth throughout your body and you might feel that golden glow just trickle down your spine It maybe warms your buttocks all the way down the backs of your legs, your heels, and the soles of your feet. You might imagine you're lying at the beach. Maybe you can hear the waves of the sea. You can hear a few seagulls. And maybe you can hear a little clink clink of ice cubes as someone just comes bringing you your favourite drink. And again, there's just that lovely warmth, golden glow all down the back of your body, bringing a sense of ease. So you can either stay there in Sphinx or if you like to, we might try a seal pose where your hands come further out to the side, say like at 10 to 2 on a clock. And you're seeing if your arms might straighten here. And again, if you tensed up your glutes, your buttocks, your legs, just give them a wriggle, let them soften. Soften. Your head can either look forwards or can hang back down. Again, whatever's more comfortable for your neck. If seal pose is just horrible, you don't like it, come back to Sphinx or come to lie down on your belly. So the aim of yin isn't to get into a more oh, tricky kind of pose. The aim of yin is to find that right point of resistance, that right amount of effort for you. That's why practicing at home might be nice because there isn't even the thought of competing against other people in the class. There's just you, your body, where it's at today. Your breath can help you keep a track of that. If your breath gets short and choppy, you take it a little bit easier until it becomes nice and slow and regular and smooth once more. So when you're ready, we're going to make our way all the way down onto our bellies. Either let your arms rest by your side or rest your head onto your hands. Take a couple of lovely full breaths there. And when you're ready, we might just come back into child's pose for a moment or two. Maybe rest your head on something if that makes it more accessible. Feel the breath just moving throughout your body at the moment. Maybe you can feel it into the back of your body. Maybe into the back of your ribs. Maybe between your shoulder blades. Maybe you can find some space around your lower back, your hips. And when you're ready, we're going to gently come back up once more. 
So for this next one, you might need a strap. So just have it handy and then you don't have to run off and get it if you do need it. We're going to come to light on our left hand sides to start with. And we'll have a few different options for this. So you could just be lying on your left hand side. Maybe have a little block or a cushion under your head if that's more comfortable. And then to begin with, I'm going to bend my right knee and just rest my left hand on my right knee. So the other leg can just come out straight along the ground. So this would be the first option. So it's variations on a twist for this pose. Then if it's available, you're going to bend your bottom leg, which is your left leg, bringing your heel back towards your bum and reach around with your right hand to see if you might take hold of your left foot. And if you can't, you might use the strap to join hand and foot together. And then the last part of this pose, just if you'd like, would be to take hold of your right foot with your left hand. And again, if they don't reach each other, it might be nice to use the strap. So you can see for the example I'm doing, just if, you, if you're looking, I'm using the strap. It's just out of the photo there to take hold, to link my right foot with my left hand. So this one's known as cat pulling its tail. So I just run through the options again. You could be in just a simple twist. You don't have to be holding on to either foot. So simple twist where you're lying on your left side and your right knee is bent and maybe just rest your left hand on your right knee. And then the second option would be to bend your bottom leg. So you're taking hold of your left foot with your right hand or using the strap. And then the last option would be to join the right foot and left hand together for a full cat pulling its tail pose. And then think of relaxing into it wherever, wherever you happen to be. And it can be quite an intense twist. So again, take it at your level, whatever type of cat you are today. Remember your breathing. Let each inhale fill as much of the body as it can. And let each exhale come all the way out, emptying all the way. So just release the feet or the straps, whatever you might have been holding, and come to lie onto your back for a moment. Let everything recenter. Might be nice to let the legs come out straight and just sink into the ground. And if you like, you can just come to roll over onto your right hand side. I'm just spinning around so that I can still face towards you so that you don't just have to see my backside. So you're coming to lie on your right hand side and we're going to have those same options. The first one will be a more simple twist. Sorry, I'm not demoing it there. But the first one is a more simple twist where you just bend your left knee and maybe rest your right hand onto your left knee. So the second option is going to be to bring your 
bottom, bend your bottom leg, your right leg, and then see if you might catch hold of that right foot with your left hand or use a strap. It can take a little while sometimes to hook the strap on. So take your time. And then the third option, if you like, would be to take hold of your left foot with your right hand. And that, that isn't doable for most people. So totally do not worry if you're nowhere near taking hold of either of your feet. You can use a strap or you can just ignore that part of the instruction. And I'd like to read you a meditation now by Melody Beatty. And it's okay to not know. Sometimes we don't know what we want, what's next, or what we think our lives will look like down the road. And that's okay. If the answer is, I don't know, then say it. And say it clearly and be at peace with not knowing. Sometimes the reason we don't know is that what's coming is going to be very different from anything we've experienced before. Even if we knew we couldn't relate to it because it's that new and that different. It's a surprise. And sometimes the reason we don't know is that it would be too difficult, too confusing for us right now. It would take us out of the present moment, cause us to worry and fuss about how we could control it or what we have to do to make it happen. And knowing would make us afraid, put us on overload and take us away from now. And sometimes our souls know, but it's just not time for our conscious mind to know yet. And sometimes knowing would take us out of the very experience we need to go through to discover the answer we're looking for. And sometimes the process of learning to trust, the process of going through an experience and coming to trust that we will ultimately discover our own truth. This is more important than knowing. So the process of moving from what we don't know to what we are to learn is a process that can be trusted. It's how we grow and change. So it's okay to not know. It's okay to let ourselves move into knowing. And the lesson is trusting that we'll know when it's time. So well done. Just gently release your feet or the straps again and ever so gently come to roll over onto your back. They were quite intense. So be gentle with yourself here. Let everything sink into the ground or have a little wriggle if you'd rather. Nice deep breaths. You're doing really well. So we're going to come to one more pose. We're going to have a lovely, happy baby pose. You can either keep the cushion or block under your head or move it away. Hug your knees into your chest. Say hello to them. Give them a nice little hug. Maybe rock from side to side. So happy baby. Again, there's options. First option might be to bring your hands onto the back of your thighs and you're letting your knees come out wide, lovely and wide. Think of the soles of your feet facing up towards the ceiling. The second option might be to take hold of your calves or your ankles. And the third and final option is to bring your hands so they cup around the 
little toe side of your foot and just take hold of the sides of your feet. This helps you to keep your feet flexed, soles of the feet pointing towards the ceiling. And we're happy, happy babies here. And again, if you've gone too far and you're thinking, ouch, back off. You really don't have to be there. So choose the option that's, that's good for you. And notice where you're feeling that in your body at the moment. Target areas are either a, often the outer hips here or the lower back. It can be a mixture of those. If you feel your chin is pointing up towards the ceiling, your neck is too arched, place a blanket or a cushion under the back of your head. That can really help. And even though happy baby can look quite, quite tranquil, it can be rather intense. So see if, again, notice where you're feeling that sensation. And our next in-breath, let your breath travel right into that area, maybe into your hips. And as you exhale, really fully exhale. Seeing how much you can soften the hips. You might let the inhale be a golden, soft, soothing oil that travels down, lubricate, <laughs> softens the hips. <laughs> and exhale. We're going to just let the arms and legs dangle up towards the ceiling now. This is the last bit we're doing. We are having a shake. So your arms and legs dangle up towards the ceiling and shake them out. You're going to shake your legs, shake your arms, shake it, shake it, shake it. Let your wrists move, let your ankles move, your hips, your legs. You're going to shake, your shake, your shake, your shake. One of the names for this pose apparently is bug in the swimming pool. Um, that's a bit... I don't know what that is, but that's what you might look like. And let it sink down to the ground. There is method in that madness. It's to let everything whew, shake back out again. Let your arms and legs sink into the ground. Your feet may be as wide as the mat. Give yourself a nice bit of space. Arms rest a little away from your sides. If you're at all chilly or just like the comfort, you're going to cover yourself with a blanket. And just take a moment or two to get comfortable. Eyes are closed. And your breath is just softening once more. You might let your attention come to rest lightly on your face. Allow your features and any expression that you hold to soften. Beginning with the eyes, just release the skin around the orbits of the eyes. And allow the eyes to become like still pools of water. You could let your gaze turn inward and down as if looking at the bottom of this still pool. And consciously release the skin on your forehead downward and out towards the temples. And as you come to the temples, allow the jaw to open slightly. And feeling the joint hanging loose and slack. And as you release the jaw, 
and go inside the mouth and open the space from the inside of the jaw on one side to the inside of the jaw on the other side. And with this new spaciousness in the mouth, just swallow a few times. Relax the throat. Allowing the back of the throat to become hollow. Feeling inside the mouth. Let the cheeks grow slack. The tongue pressing neither on the teeth nor on the roof of the mouth. Soften the skin of your lips as your lips part slightly. Consciously let the skin over your entire face grow loose as if it were draped like a soft blanket over your face. Now let the scalp release its grip on your skull. And as the scalp grows slack, feel the back of the skull broadening on the floor. And let this broadness extend down your neck. And as you let go of the effort of maintaining your image, allow this relaxation in your face to move inward. Let it move easily and completely down into your brain until the brain itself feels completely relaxed. As the brain relaxes, let this relaxation you feel in the brain travel throughout your entire body. Let it travel deeply into the core of your body. and into all your limbs, through your arms, to your fingers, through your legs, to your toes. you're ready, just start to wriggle your fingers and your toes a little. Maybe have a stretch. And just in your own time, you're going to roll over to one side. And gently coming back up to seated. And if you like, bring your hands to your heart. And just take a moment here, really thanking yourself for coming along to practice today and thanking each other too. Namaste. And then, if you like, because the yoga cats were so good, this is just a little extra. They didn't interrupt me at all during this recording, so I just have to show how good they were. This was Maxwell, and he was just on the bed, happy out. Not a bother to him at all. And then my darling little smudge cat was here. He was having a little sleep in a covered one of his favorite little places so I did disturb him so we'll just say hello smudge beautiful beautiful cat and bye